All right, I'm uh, Adam Fairbanks from Bluestone Energy Services. I'm the Vice President of uh, Engineering and Business Development. And I'm Coy Stein, the Director of Data Center Services with Bluestone Energy Services. So, Adam, maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about Bluestone and what you guys do. Sure. Uh, Bluestone's been uh, in existence for 20 years now, uh, doing energy conservation services, uh, lighting, HVAC, mechanical systems of large commercial industrial facilities. Uh, a few years back, we started the data center division to uh, help data center retrofit projects qualify for utility incentives. And COI has come on board recently to help us expand that base as we've grown into some of the other utility markets um, in the past few years. And COI, what are kind of some of the ways that you work with uh, with data center companies? We have a, a, we'd like to take a holistic approach to the their to the energy savings opportunities that are within data centers. So we look at things such as improving the airflow. Uh, we look at things such as uh, uh, making barriers so that there are defined hot and cold zones. Uh, we also focus very much on controls of HVAC equipment within the data center. All of these things taken together provide a lot of information that data center operators did not have previously. And at the same time, they're able to save significant amounts of energy because the airflow has been improved and temperatures uh, at the crack units are able to be raised and so on and so forth uh, in order to, to permanently reduce energy savings for the given IT load at the time. So, Adam, what uh, what utilities do you work with, and, and what kind of programs are, are available, and uh, uh, is there more on the table now than there used to be? Um, the answer to the last question is yes. Uh, we work with a lot of different utilities. We have four offices um, in our headquarters is in Norwell, Massachusetts, and we also have offices in Chicago, Buffalo, and Baltimore. Really, the reasons for why we've had those offices where they are is because of expansion of utility programs in the different regions in the U.S. Right. So we work with companies such as National Grid and NSTAR, um, NYSERDA. Um, Which is New York. Yep, Smart Start. And then Baltimore Gas and Electric recently opened a program uh, in January, as well as in the past few years, a lot of the utilities in the Midwest have opened programs. So not only are the programs um, expanding, but the ones that are existing are looking for deeper dives because traditionally the utility programs first focused a lot on lighting because it was the low hanging fruit. Right. It was a little easier to define. And now uh, the custom programs that they use to qualify data center projects, they're looking to do more uh, deeper dives into the facilities and data centers is a, is a large you know, piece of the energy pie, if you will, because it's you know, traditionally a very large portion of the, the energy footprint for, for companies. So it's an attractive target for the utility programs, and as such, they're, they're very interested in trying to place money for those projects. Now, uh, are most of these, uh, do, the, do these programs tend to target technologies or just overall savings? What, what's the structure? The structure typically is that um, most of the projects that we do go run through what's known as the custom program, meaning that we have to do a, uh, an assistance study to qualify the, the proposed measure for the savings. So what that means is we have to baseline the data center the way it currently exists, you know, the supply systems, the you know, existing racks and equipment in the, in the data center, and then through spreadsheet analysis, modeling, et cetera, prove that moving from one, uh, from the base case to the proposed case will save the, the energy that we, that we propose. So there's a, there's a, um, you know, a study that usually takes about one to two months, and from that point, the utilities then actually either peer review it or send it out to a third party for review, and we basically go back and forth on what the, you know, what the savings finally is. But at the end of the day, the customer gets, um, you know, the real cost, the real savings that has been estimated, and the amount of money that the utility will provide to implement the job. And so they have a roadmap at that point to actually go ahead and make an informed decision about what they want to do. 
And, and Corey, uh, how does this translate into like the, the work within the data center? What what are the kind of things that uh, uh, that, that would tell us a little bit maybe about how you work with a, a data center a, a operator uh, okay. to to do that assessment? Sure. Well, as Adam mentioned, a lot of the work for the engineering company Bluestone is necessary. It's required up front, so it's a front end loaded type project where. A lot of the details, almost all of the details, have to be worked out before the customer decides to go forward with the actual project. So there is a, a large amount of data that needs to be gathered and basically a, a system fleshed out, I would say probably to the 80% level, before the actual uh, project is submitted to the utility program so that they know what exactly the solution is going to look like in terms, and that's that could be anything and everything. All of the uh, various solutions that you see down in the expo are available. We we utilize them right. and put them together into a custom solution in order to maximize the return to the to the customer. And and how does uh, what, what's Bluestone's you know sort of role in this thing in terms of the business model here? So we we turn key to the solution. You know, basically from start to finish, we'll come in, do an initial audit, no cost audit figure out what the customer has already, what their energy conservation, uh, you know, what they've already been doing. Also, we look at what's their tolerance for implementation in terms of, you know, do, can they move racks? Can, are they interested in, you know, being more aggressive in, in retrofitting? Or do they have to have a zero impact solution? Uh, based upon the discussions, we get a better understanding of what's, you know, feasible for them. We do the study, as I mentioned, to uh, basically figure out what they're doing and what could be done. And then at the end of the day, we, we actually will go ahead and build the solution for them. We actually will take the incentive where possible. Most, most uh, utility programs let you do this. We'll take the incentive as partial payment so that the customer doesn't have to actually put that amount of money out. They basically can subtract that from the total cost, and they're left with a much smaller piece that they, they have to, to pay for. So for larger jobs, say, for an example, you know, one job that we're doing includes lighting, uh, retrofitting to a central chiller plant, um, you know, airflow management inside the data center. The, the utility incentive is about $850,000 on a couple million dollar project. So that's a huge uh, capital expenditure that they don't have to make um, to, to have the project go forward. So it typically is something that's attractive. Uh, and one of the other things that we work on is also um, some utilities offer financing, mm -hmm. and we work with them to to figure out how to make that available to the customer. What's your customer base look like? What kind of data centers? Uh, what kind of companies are, are taking advantage of of this? And, and what are some of the resistance points for folks? Um, well, basically, any data center above about twenty five hundred square feet, all the way up to and including a hundred. 150,000 square feet. Those are all open to, you know, there are energy savings measures. The, the methodology, the process is exactly the same for, for both types of data center, large and small, but of course the numbers work out differently in the end. Uh, but there can be significant savings in a very small data center right. still. And uh, of the different utilities and regions you work with, what are some of the ones that have had the the, the best returns in terms of, you know, because obviously the geographies that matter and are different here. Yeah, and, and certain programs are at different levels of maturity in terms of, you know, how much they're paying. And um, I will say the Northeast has, uh, you know, some pretty aggressive programs. They'll pay, in some cases, up to 50% of the cost of the, of the project, which is pretty great. Um, but we're seeing cases basically across these different programs we're seeing where, if they were paying, say, t up to 20, now they're moving to 25, then they're moving to 30 the next year. Um, it seems like the trend will be that no matter what zone you're in, if they have a program, over time it's going to get, you know, better.